What's up boys? Welcome to another private lesson. Today we have another TVP. Seems to be a, a bit of a hot topic on the channel. You guys like TVP videos. You guys keep sending in TVP replays. So here we go. The bottom right, playing for team ECV, we have Mana One Way. And he's playing against Killy McBilly. Now, uh, this is a 4.5k, 4.6k MMR TVP. Um, Mana One Way said that I used my triple prong build, so he's gonna go for the mind drop and the tank push, if correctly, with the liberator. And uh, he actually got ahead, just like I said in the guide. Good job on that one, proud of you. And uh, but he still managed to lose uh, to multiple engagements, so we're gonna have a look here. Let's see how long is his replay, it's about 20 minutes, so got a lot of stuff to analyze for you guys. We're gonna be uh critiquing the build a little bit uh, this is a very early SEV scout already this is a bit different from uh, what I usually do to be safe I would recommend this SEV to scout which is two supply later he scouted at uh, 16 I recommend rallying the 18 SEV, SEV. It's, it's perfectly in time to counter anything so yeah th this seems like a bit of an early SEV scout I feel like Terran builds are very very tight you know I don't think you can really afford to lose too much money so probably should stick to that 18 SV scout in my opinion. He do block his Nexus for a bit. He uh, he seems to have given up on taking the Nexus. Okay, there we go. It's a nice delay. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, you don't see this often, but you, you're the Protoss in this game, you know? This is the... Yeah, this is what you want to see. You're the Protoss here. I like it. We're just going to go for that Reaper expand. All looking good so far. I, I'm pretty sure you should still be able to afford our, all your stuff. The bunker might be a little bit expensive with that early SCV scout. Not sure about it. It's actually gonna go down. I'm curious how you're gonna use the Reaper. This is always uh, as, as kind of a Reaper uh, fanatic. You know, I, uh, I always pay attention to the Reaper a lot. See how the Terrans do with it. Let's see. We got a quick scout, no big deal. Th this map is very short, so actually moving into the base with the Reaper on this map is very safe. If, if you play uh, on a map that's a little bit longer, sometimes you go up the ramp with the Reaper and the Adept is already waiting there and, and then it gets a little bit scary. Yeah, so, so far not, nothing wrong with the build, all fine. Oops. Reaper's gonna chill a bit. Uh, I, I would have liked to see you go in a little bit earlier. Now, in this case, he made his third pylon and a battery before the tech. But normally, I feel like you kind of want to go in before the second gateway's unit is out, just to see what he's doing. Wow, that shot actually hit. Unbelievable. Yeah, looking pretty good. This bunker is going to prevent any more damage. I think Stalker won't be able to get in. You don't mind. Gonna skip the heli and I see. Probably don't need it in this game. Oh, you're, you're doing good so far, for sure. This guy's rallying a lot of units. He, he's really just producing gateway units. No tech yet. I guess you made the right decision to not scout since he's not uh, building anything. He's gonna go for the robo. Now, in this scenario, I would definitely like you to send your Reaper like you, you're already safe right you, you don't really need the reaper here so it's definitely better to send out the reaper and actually scout with it like you don't need it now maybe uh, you know you can drop it off here actually where the logo is you can go around and just get a scout it's very important oh you actually lost the reaper here as well yeah try to be careful with that because the reaper is actually very important like this guy um I, I don't know how common this is but he's actually going for a very fast double forge so it would actually be in your best interest to scout this so you can react accordingly. Like if you do the push right now uh, with the tanks, I feel like it might be a little bit awkward. Like his third base might be late, but if you know this, you know he's greedy, you can actually push a bit harder, you know? So definitely take care of the Reaper. Don't, don't use it to, uh, to, like you just traded here for an Adept. But pulling it back initially to defend, that was fine. But uh, yeah, not using it to scout after you were flying is kind of, not the greatest decision. 
This is very annoying. O obviously, next time, um, like I imagine you thought the stalker was gone, but just try to take a more, you know, around path. If if you send it uh, directly against a robo, the matter of fact, with the drop, it's also gonna meet the observer. The observer uh, hits at the right timing. So try to send your medifact drop like here, all the way around, if you want to hit the natural or just up. Like the, try to not send it straight. There, there, there could always be a, a random adept sending there or a random stalk or the observer hallucinated phoenix. So try to fly that around. Our build is still looking good, I believe. This is, this is actually very annoying. You're going to have to walk it around. It's gonna cost you like 10 seconds, I think, in the end. The bridge is going there. This guy's making cannons for defense as well. Super fast 1-1 one, one upgrades for him. Alright, so uh, yeah, basically uh, basically the build went pretty perfect so far. You forgot to make a tech level here for the barracks, but yeah, it's, it's not the biggest of deals, really. Third CC is already down. It's looking, it's looking pretty good. Can't, uh, can't complain about that too much. Now that the tank push, I feel like you're definitely hitting a bit late. Uh, not only did your tank get stuck, but you also took a very weird path. Like you went all the way up here just to go back here, you know, like timing is very important. It may not seem like it, but this Colossus would just be started. For example, if you hit right away, everything on time, um, maybe he has two warpins less at this point. Like that, that kind of stuff is actually very important. Imagine if you would, uh, just, just to put everything together that I just said. Imagine if you scouted the double forge and the robo bay, knowing that he was gonna have little units. You could have pushed the front, and then if you hit on the right time, he would probably have four stalkers and a sentry with his colossus, maybe 15 seconds in production or something. And you would have be able to set up here in front of the nexus. But uh, for now, actually, you're you're making the right decision. It seems like you're gonna go back. There we go. That's that's impressive. I think. It, it's hard to make that call. You own the third and it's kind of confusing. Like that was that was too easy. Do I, do I go back or do I punish him? Is he being greedy? But you made the right decision here to go back. Don't forget your third obviously is done. So this is, uh, yeah, this is good stuff. Getting the third backing off. And now you secured yourself a pretty decent lead. He's going to have to make that third base again. Obviously on, on two bases, a Protoss can't actually produce that much. They can have... Um, a robo producing with like six gateways, but that is without upgrades. As you can see right now, uh, he wants to get, he just finished one, one. He wants to get two, two as well. And the twilight upgrade, he's actually not making any units. He's making Colossus. And now he even has to choose between upgrades or, or, or units. So, and meanwhile, you're just, uh, as you can see, production tab, everything going perfect. Already saturated on a third. So you grabbed yourself a good leader. It's good stuff. A uh, sm small thing to recommend here. This is. Uh, I don't know if I told you guys this before. This is something I do. If you play against Robo Bay, I actually get four tech labs because yeah, like you already have a good marine count from the early game, but you don't really really want that many marines later on. Like a lot of the times, Terrans get up to like 40, 45 marines just because you have two reactors and you have so much from the early game left. And if you have that amount of marines, you're just gonna get destroyed by uh, storms or colossus. So. If you play against Zealots, the Zealot Templar, even if they have Storms, making Marines is okay because you combine it with the Widow Mines. But Widow Mines don't do anything against Colossus, as you know, so you actually really need that bulk of Marauders to go through. So if you play against Colossus, Robo Bay, I would really recommend to get this fourth tech lab so you can start spamming Marauders later on. This fight's gonna go. And this is actually a, a good example of this. These Colossus just shot a few swipes and they have 11 kills. Like, Marines just die instantly. Like, you're... Obviously, this fight was uh, before the production would have kicked in. But you really need to be careful with having too many Marines. Like, yeah, your army just get... If, if you didn't have the Marines, this fight would have looked almost the same. Almost exactly the same. You would have traded a little bit, not lost all those Marines. So what I would recommend is if you get to a high Marine count, you should definitely drop... At least one medevac, maybe two medevac of marines, go all the way up here. Or if he still has his third base, you can go to the left side into the natural. But don't push directly into Colossus with too many marines. Like the marines all just die and then the rest of your army is the one actually fighting the fight. So yeah, it's not too bad. You lost a few marines, maybe like 10, 15. Um, it could have been worse really. Now here you're getting caught out of position a little bit. 
Like, th this, this trade is not even that bad. It's just... I feel like your army was actually a little bit stronger than his. Like, you need to be a bit more aware of uh, where the Protoss army is. And try to work with your timings a little bit, you know. If you if you clicked on his units when you pushed, you would have saw that he had 1-1. One, one. Uh, and right now you're just kind of attacking in the middle of a timing. Your 1-1 one, one timing is already passed. It's not like you have any Vikings or anything. You're just kind of wandering around the map w without aim. You don't have a timing to hit. So you should just go back. You can take map control with like two medevacs. But right now, uh, you were moving out with like... I, I, I completely random armor. You have two tanks, a widow mine. How many buy units? This is like 13 or something. Some random marines trolling. And like this, this is not an army. This is not a timing. What do you do at this point? Your timing is passed. You don't want to hit a timing anymore. You're transitioning to your starport. You would just send two medevacs with some bio to roam the map, you know? Right now, you're, you're caught with a really weird army. And yeah, you, you're, you're just losing it all for free, basically. You're going to kill a few stalkers, maybe. I think I saw like two stalkers go down. And uh, you lose everything. So yeah, tr try to not walk around aimlessly on the map. If you have really good map vision, which takes a lot of APM to do, uh, which would be sending random marines across the map. One marine here, one marine here, one marine here. If you have perfect vision, you can try a bit more. But outside of that, try to work with your timings a little bit. Like, don't don't just aim, aimlessly walk across the map with uh, your random army all the time. Now, since you were in a good spot, uh, you, sh you should have definitely gone for the Ghost. I think the, this 4cc is very fast. In, in TVP, the 4cc is not as useful as, as the, the Ghost Academy. And especially... What I, what I want to say, the 4CC is not as useful as in other matchups. In TVZ, for example, let's say you play against Mudas, your army is just going to be a Marine Marauder, Widow Mine, right? Maybe some Taurus later on. And your army composition stays the same, even if you take your Ford. Maybe your extra barracks are a bit later, but it's no big deal. But in TVP, you really want to make a well rounded army composition before you start expanding. Because you didn't make a Ghost Academy, like without Ghost, your army is probably going to lose against his. He's already starting his 3 3 as well. His army is looking pretty strong. And with Ghost, you would actually have a good shot to win. But since you made this fourth early, uh, there's not much else you can do with it. Like I always recommend, try to get your Ghost Academy to line up with 2-2. So you can, or try to get your Ghost lined up with 2-2. So you can push with 2-2 and Ghost and a bunch of Vikings. If you didn't have the fourth here, and you have three Ghosts, I'm, I'm pretty confident you actually smash this army, barring any big disruptor hits, right? And right now, without the ghost, it actually looks pretty sketchy. So, yeah, let's see. Like, this this fourth base right now, it just doesn't add too much. Like, maybe in one minute, you're going to be able to add three barracks. Yeah, you, you already added them a bit early, I see. Uh, and, and that's it. But I would focus more in TVP on getting the good army composition, which in this case, you play against Colossus. You have good upgrades is to get the ghost viking timing for 2-2 going. Once again, keep trying to work with your timings. Now let's see. Okay, dodge the first disruptor. Second one hits pretty hard. Oh, that's. I'm sorry, bro. I I, I feel that. No colossus skills with the battery. And yeah, that's that's gonna cost you. Yeah, you get a colossus at least. That's that's just pretty good. I I feel like more than anything in this game, your your macro has been uh, pretty good. Like the transition was nice. Your you're keeping up in units. Even if you have been losing the fights, yeah, you can see you, you've been losing the fights pretty convincingly. I, I feel like that's definitely what you need to work on. In this case, try to never push down a ramp into, uh, yeah, splash units pretty much, Colossal Disruptor Storm. If you want to attack him here in this location, you would probably send some units here, maybe a few units here. I, I think flanking with just two sides is better as Terran because... Since we have so many medevacs, vikings, it becomes kind of hard to like, you know, split all our tech units. Like a little bit of bio here with three vikings, a little bit of bio here with three vikings. It's better off to just split it in two because else it becomes very complicated. But if you want to attack down this ramp against this splash, you definitely need to like flank him here. And this this base is, is as you can see, this base is very flankable. Like if, if you're very try hard if, or if you're maxed, maybe that uh, makes a little bit more sense. Or if you're playing without Vikings, uh, then you can even flag, flank from three sides. But definitely don't just run run here on the ramp uh, against all the splash. 
Now, just like the previously, I, I really feel like you you walk around a bit aimlessly with your army. Like this 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 is not an army what you have. This is just I don't know, a scrapyard collection of stuff. Like he would beat you with just his stalkers, you know. You, you you're not hitting any timing, you walk around with ten bio units, like unless you have an army that contests, once again. Grab two men of axe with uh, 10 bio units and grab the map control. Snipe, snipe pylons around the map if they have it, or spotter units in this case. But don't, don't walk around aimlessly with this army. A, a Protoss army, it, it's like they have charge, they have blink. Like he can blink on there and you won't be able to escape. You have stim, but you're gonna lose units, you're gonna lose stuff. So really try to, you know, work up to a good army and then push with that instead of just rallying. This is more of a TVZ, like this is exactly what I was talking about. He blinks on you. And you can't escape, you're just stuck there and, and probably gonna get destroyed. These lips are pretty handy, but yeah, there's just too much stuff. He's actually derping out a bit, that's nice for you. He's scared of the five marauders with his uh, 13 stalkers. But once again, uh, not a great fight for you. And, 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 and you're still doing much of the same thing. I might be repeating myself a little bit here, but I'm, I'm emphasizing a lot. Um, yeah, try, try to stick to doing good pushes instead of just rallying stuff. Now, Liberators is something that's a bit questionable in this game. I feel like Liberators is something you get when a guy is actually on, on Mass Disruptor, or maybe if he's playing like a very low gas army, you know, you're playing against just Zealot Archon. But if you play Liberators on this map, uh, right now they, they do well, they've done well, okay? But if you siege them here on this map, you can very easily go around in any place on this map. You you can't really hold a position with Liberators here. Uh, Ghost really should have been the priority over Liberators here. Also, if you do go for Liberators, you need to get ship weapons. Like, Liberators are not good without plus two ship weapons. With plus two ship weapons, you two shot the Stalkers instead of three shotting. Which, as you can imagine, is a huge deal. So if you actually want to go for libs, you have to get ship weapons, 100%. Even if you play Vikings, I, you, you should make them, I make them. But if you go libs, you, you must you must have it. Like, you, you can't really go libs, especially not against this full stalker composition if you don't get the ship weapons. And in general, try to prioritize Ghost over that. If you play against Colossus, if you, if you don't play against Colossus, uh, you don't make Vikings, and then it actually makes more sense to get... Maybe Ghost and then Libs, but in, in this, in this against this army composition, you definitely need to get Vikings, then Ghost, and then uh, a lot of late game Liberators. Uh, the Fusion Curse should have also been faster in case you wanted to play Libs, because yeah, Libs were out range. As you can see there, it's it's you know it's not that great. And this this is exactly what I was talking about. You, I, I'm I'm glad this guy showcased it. Well, I'm, I'm sorry for you, but. <laughs> Uh, it's very easy to walk around the lips when you, when you have an army like this. You really need to be set up late game, you know. Uh, probably not on this map either because this map is so easy to walk around. But uh, yeah, in this case, you know, you, you're probably macroing at home. Maybe it's when you were building these buildings and the army just comes from back and everything dies. Even if you unseize and resiege, you, you need to be sieged already before the fight or you're gonna get owned. And, uh, and that's what happened. So this guy's taking it very patiently actually he could uh, he could probably kill you right now this is actually the, the situation where libs are the right choice like you're you're kind of dead and you you can never catch back up in an army to make uh yeah you, you can't make enough marine marauder viking ghost to deal with someone that's already max so here your only chance to win is actually to camp on libs and uh yeah ho hope he doesn't manage to like spread you out too much with zealot run buys and stuff so after your army died, that's when the lib decision is actually good. So right right now I'm uh, I like it. Getting your ship weapons as well. Also, um, instead of three starpers, you should have just lifted one on on this factory. Like getting three three starpers is actually very expensive. Like uh, if you would have them all on reactors. And you make uh, six lib at the same time. It's like 900, 900 in resources. Like you can't really afford that, you know. You, you should just stick to four production by switching the Widow Mine factory. Putting the starport on there. Okay, Disruptor's kind of whiff. Good EMPs. Now, th this is like... This is actually your best fight of the game. You get like four Disruptors there. 
don't even lose a lot. And then this position you took here is very good. Protoss, honestly, if you have a good army, Protoss can't really attack into the planetary. Like, this is the best position ever. Now you're overextending a little bit here out of planetary range. I, I, well, another example why you don't make that many marines in the late game. Those marauders, they actually did fantastic, right? Co considering how much bigger this army was, the ghost and marauders, they did a great job. And the, the marines just walk in and they instantly die. There was like 10 of them, they just disappeared. Like, you, you really don't want uh, to be making marines here. Especially not with how much gas you have, you, you definitely want to be focusing on... And this is a Terran problem, by the way. Uh, the, the Terran resource spending curve is, is very imbalanced. You, you spend a lot of gas at the start because you need to get so many upgrades. And then it really falls off. So definitely in the late game, since you have so much gas, unless you're like a, a I don't know, a gas saturation god, like as soon as you get your fourth, you pull fourth of your natural, uh, let's, let's, let's not get too try hard, okay? So just, yeah, avoid making too many Marines. Like th those are all useless right now against what he has. He still has three Colossus. Maybe if you kill all of these Colossus, uh, he, he hasn't made Storm, so maybe then, but right now, uh, They'll just get zapped by the Colossus, and that's it. That's also a reason why uh, getting gases on your... Especially these gases are very questionable. Like, on your fourth base, you know, you're making ghosts. You're going to get your 3-3. Three, three. You're making a lot of starboard units. The fourth gases, they seem reasonable. But getting gases on your fifth base as Terran... No, that's... That's very questionable. Like, yeah. It, it's very natural. I know, I do it too. But... You just don't need gas in the late game as Terran, really. Just just little. You really don't need a lot of gas. I feel like if you have uh, five gases mining in the late game, four or five gases, that, that's probably enough to saturate all your stuff. Oh, this is a very cool move, actually. You're in a dire uh, situation, and he has so many bases. Now, th this is something I, I really can get behind. Once again... Oh, this is such a huge deal. You don't have to plus two attack. It's 90 stalkers against seven libs. Every stalker is going to tank an extra shot. This is this is actually such a huge deal. If you had plus two here, your chances to win would actually increase by like, I don't know, 10-15% at least, I would say. Let's see how it goes. EMPs. Kind of... Um, wait, I, I want to watch this fight again to see w what exactly happened. From your point of view. Watch it again. Yeah, you, it was just a tough fight, right? Okay, you you did have the ghost hold key, but I know you were trying to split your army. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this trade wasn't that bad. It, it, he had more stuff than you, and you you killed a lot of his supply. Uh, you needed better, of course. I think if you had all your uh, lip siege to the right side. Because you, you could have known where his army was coming from. It could have worked out. But yeah, it was going to be hard anyway. Also, don't forget with the... Uh, stalkers are exactly 80-80 in uh, hit points and shields. So with an EMP, they actually die in one hit to the Liberator. Very important as well. If you EMP stalkers and you have plus two attack on the Liberators, the, they actually die in one shot by the Liberator. But those are important things to know, like, in this case, imagine all the stalkers are EMP, plus 2 armor, yeah, it literally, or plus 2 attack, it literally halves the amount of hits you need. Now, yeah, one more tip I can give you for fights like that is just to be pre-split. It's the same in TVZ, if you're, if you're fighting a big Ling Bane army and you have to split during the fight, it, it, it looks cool, right? It, it looks great, guys, but... Yo, you're gonna lose because you're in, instead of shooting, you're busy splitting. And in this case, you got your ghost killed by a disruptor while you were trying to split your bio units. And yeah, like I don't know, even um, even for players like Maru, it's just you you, you need to have uh, everything set up well, you know. Like you needed to split before the fight, and uh, and not be busy doing that. Maybe with some EMP, some great liberators, you could have won that fight. And that's gonna be it. So yeah, my conclusion for this game is honestly, your macro is pretty good. Obviously, you make some small mistakes throughout the game. Like I said, too much gas, making too many marines, stuff like that.
but the main problem was really the fights um, and to break that down a little bit more is that you I repeated a lot in the in the during the replay as well is that you don't work with a timing you just randomly walk around with your army uh, you're out on the map while his army is stronger than yours you didn't work on your composition you didn't get the ghost in time if this game you hit a 2-2 ghost viking timing properly lining up the ghost uh, not, not not even with the emp upgrade just lining up the ghost with the 2-2 and the vikings uh, you probably would have smashed that army unless you got a massive disruptor hit and that would have won you the game but instead you kept rallying you lost a lot of units unnecessarily as you can see uh pretty horrible trading here uh, you did have a good start you did have good macro so yeah those engagements and more than anything hitting the right timings and knowing when to move out and not just move around rallying with the army that's that's going to help you win a lot of games so yeah, that's going to be it for this replay um don't forget to sub to my twitch and if you want to have a replay analyzed as well i stream a few times in the week I'll, I'll post the links below and stuff. Thank you guys for watching anyway. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios.